That is your Movie Draft Minute for the week of July 2nd, 2012. All right, man. Look, uh, what an unusual episode of NSFW where we had an opportunity to have such a candid and awesome conversation with somebody who will shape geek culture for the next, you know, couple of decades. How badass is that, man? Dude, it was it was certainly something, man. That was that was awesome. That was an awesome conversation. Oh, by the way, eat a bag of dicks, Ernie Klein, because there it is right there. Theater wide tactical warfare. Although he also says he pointed out theater wide biotoxic and chemical warfare. So, so they're both me. right. They're both right. Touche, sir. Uh, hey, we should check in real quick. We wanted to talk about the uh, our, our book, right? Bitly slash the Diamond Club book. Is that what it is? Uh. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. That's. Uh, I mean, I think we wanted to go over it with with Ernie, but uh, I don't know what else we're going to talk about with it. Just check in, remind everyone, because I'm sure all this will show show everything. <laughs> Look at this. It says here, the Diamond Club document locked until the end of the show. Also, hi Ernie. Look, we got a lot of juice in here, and by juice, I mean human fluids being shot all over each other in the sexiest way possible. Uh, we need we keep those contributions coming. I'm very pleased with the the sexiness and the bodily fluids and the banging that I'm seeing so far. It's the one rule, folks. The one rule. Lots of banging. God, All we got that. we got too excited with Ernie's genuinely fascinating personal story that we didn't get a chance to talk about. Holy crap, we got hundreds of pages. Hundreds of single space pages. Yes. This is amazing. Brianna travels to IHOP after a satisfying night at the Diamond Club, but finds herself hungrier than ever. With my hungry libido satisfied for the evening after my encounter at the Diamond Club, I found myself wandering around the town in the early hours of the morning, surprisingly famished. My striped heels clacked on the warm pavement, calming my mind. I felt confident, cool, and alive. Suddenly, I sniffed in the sweet scent of blank pancakes, wondrous waffles, and blank omelets. My nose led me to the local IHOP, a breakfast realm I had not <laughs> entered before. As I passed through the, flight, the threshold, I looked at the bright colors, the empty tables, and oh my, the savory greeter behind his post. I scanned his name tag. Michael, it read. Michael's skin matched the color of perfectly prepared waffles, and his eyes held the color of bursting blueberries. This is perfect. What? What? Why are you looking that way? No, I'm looking. I'm trying to read it because there's a larger screen here, okay. and I couldn't. Read I thought I thought you were doing this like it's too much for me. I can't. No, I can't, no, I can't no, no. It was it. very erotic, and and I like it's Boner Town, Boner Town, twenty four seven with that book. So I mean, everybody keep writing there. Uh, I guess in the coming weeks, we'll we'll be paring down which chapters we're gonna go with. Uh, me and Brian have yet to write our chapters. And uh, we will uh, we'll have a book. And we'll, by the way, uh, I guess in the next by next week, do we want yeah, to set yeah, a release uh, we're, we're, we're gonna wrap we're gonna wrap things up next week. You got one more week. If you're listening to this, hurry up, head on over to bitly.com or bit.ly slash the Diamond Club book. Go ahead and contribute your chapter because we're gonna go ahead and call everything and wrap things up. By the way, the one thing that unfortunately we will not have is this chapter by Padre S J, uh, the Franciscan. <laughs> It says here, I had a chapter written that documented the torrid love affair between, is that is that Father Nathan Samuel Francis Walters and the lovely Brianna under the dim copper lighting of a cheap faux antique oil lamp as the wind blew against the corrugated walls of the priest's love shack. Unfortunately, I was told by one of my Jesuit brothers that it would probably be better if that chapter died with me. You know, I'll tell you what, that's really crazy because I actually wrote a chapter with the exact same characters and character names. So <laughs> it, it's nuts that if, if uh, you know, whether or not he sent that to me, uh, I'm the one who wrote that chapter. Sure. So sure. Uh, publicly. No, that's good. All right, look, we're going to wrap things up. We love each and every one of you guys. Do us a favor. Why don't you die in the fire? You're, you're lying, Justin? Well, we already did the line. We did, what, it the, we did it when we ended the show. Well, one of us says die in a fire and the other says... We did, but we did before. I have to say it again. See you next Tuesday. Yeah, all right. Well, I'm sure that's just, just good. <laughs> all right, what do we call in this episode? <laughs> I don't know. Wrist I saw a lot of people said wrist jizz. I don't think a wrist jizz is going to make it. 
Actually, it was in Empire Strikes Back. <laughs> Let's do it that. There we go. Okay. All right. Got it. <clears throat> this is NSFW episode 134, recorded on July 3rd, 2012. Actually, it was in Empire Strikes Back. In this episode of NSFW Show, we interview, and one of the best interviews we've ever done in the history of this show, Ernie Klein, the author of Ready Player One. We get the full story of fanboys, how we came up with Ready Player One, where it's going to go, the movie, nothing is left unturned in this interview. you got to watch it. And also, in the middle, I completely embarrass myself. And it's hilarious. It's it really all is. coming up on this edition of NSFW show. Well played, sir. And this episode was brought to you by... Oh, well, let's see. This episode is brought to you by Squarespace.com, the best and easy way to create a high-quality website or blog. For a free trial and 10% off your first purchase on new accounts, go to Squarespace.com and use offer code NSFW7 and... Now they offer free domain registration with annual plan subscriptions. Oh my God, look at this. Somebody found, and by somebody, I mean uh, your friend of mine, Mitt Zula, the Mike Rula, the old schooler, appears to have discovered the first gate during the interview. There we go. How awesome is that, man? Dude, I'll tell you what, I'm, I'm with you. I want one of our guild to bring this one home. It's going to be pretty sweet when it happens, because I'm... Um, I think this is, I don't know, I have faith in you guys. I don't know how many people we got we got on, uh, on on our squad, but I think we got a pretty good shot. Yeah, man. I'm pretty stoked for it. Uh, okay, so I guess I guess we're just going to wrap things up, man. I guess so. Uh, man, I hope I hope we didn't tick off the chat realm because that was genuinely fascinating to me. Like that was that was just where my my personal interest was too high for me to. Uh, oh my gosh, just a random geek is saying that he brews beer at home and wants to know what kind of beer we like because they're going to bring some to NSFW at DragonCon, which I can confirm. I just got my letter yesterday. From from Dragon Con saying that we're in. I don't know what we're in. I assume NSFW Live, Dragon Con 2012. Be there or just kill yourself right now. So, all right, awesome. Well, I mean, yeah, hopefully, I mean, we were hoping that that wasn't going to be a problem, but uh, definitely make your plans. Come on out. Yeah. Oh, that's right. Yeah, uh, we, we should pop back in. We got, uh, hold on, let me. Understand. Uh, we got Kurt Anderson is uh, is one of the biggest fans of Dragon Con. He's been going to Dragon Con how many years? Oh, wait, wait, go. Yeah, like uh, all of them, uh, <laughs> all the years there ever were. Back when oh, it was in a I, single I hotel, Kurt... and it was like five hundred people. Oh my God! Uh, he, really? Here's something that most people don't know. I was one of the DMs for the first uh, ten thousand dollar cash prize Dungeons and Dragons tournament. It was run at Dragon Con. No kidding. Yeah. That's amazing, yeah. dude. So it's it's we've been going since like 1990. Uh, no, matter of fact, I Justin, the last time I Kurt. saw you, last time and I, I saw I you, met Kurt and I, I, me and Andrew had, had, had lunch with you with him and yeah. his lovely wife. How are you doing, buddy? Good. Last time I saw you was at Dragon Con. No, because we saw oh, each no, other. Oh no, right. that's right. It was yeah, that's right. You had a lecture. Yeah, yeah, that's right. That's right. In Birmingham, I took you to to Dreamland. Absolutely, yeah. that's yes. right. Uh, on the barbecue world tour. Yeah. By, by the way, that's for people right. wondering, this, somebody was just like, "Where the f did this guy come from?" Uh, uh, Kurt's actually been here, but of course, we had we had Ernie already booked, so we just we just focused on Ernie, yeah. and he was sort of the studio audience during this show. But uh, dude, it was amazing. Oh, great show! It's an honor to sit in and listen to all that. Uh, Totally love the eighties and the whole thing. Dude, so you need to like read. You need to do. do, do I'll, I'll absolutely have to. I will. Uh, uh, I'll loan you my copy of Ready Player One. So Sweet. You can, you to, can... to tell you how much of an eighties geek I am, I have a thirteen-year-old son that can name song and artist of almost any eighties top forty hit or metal hit just by hearing the first little bit of the You're song. You're preparing him for yeah, when uh, awesome. for when Halliday dies and, and there you go. The, 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 the oasis to My someone. son could probably find the, the keys quicker than I could in the book. <laughs> <laughs> that is awesome. Uh, man, well, I guess Justin, uh, what's what's your story? Do you have to you have to bug out here? Do we have to do we have to wrap this thing up? 
Uh, yeah, I'm going to eat pizza and then I'm going to drive home. Pizza. Because I All got right. an hour drive home. Do you, have, do, you have time, do you have time to hang out and eat while I render this, or? Uh, I I don't know. I'm more paranoid after the bagel bites thing about eating on screen, so I prefer not. To. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to. Make after it. after no, I no. completely embarrass myself, I'd like to not <laughs> give <laughs> another gigantic <laughs> uh, <laughs> embarrassing thing if right, I could right. in one day today. Well, uh, all right. Well, then here I'll let you drop off, and uh, we're hey, still live. In fact, good to see you again, man. Good to oh, see you, absolutely, Justin. Absolutely, man. I didn't I didn't realize that you were the, yeah. that you were the, the, the guest. I didn't put two and two together because I'm dumb. No, that's cool. Hey, I'll see you at Dragon Con, though, if not before. Absolutely. No, it's going to be the best time ever. Absolutely. Right on. All okay, right. so uh, you can you can hang up, and I guess we might drop off the Twit feed, but for those of you guys watching, we'll continue on the Justin feed. I still need to render this video, which will take a little while, so I'll be on for a bit. I just hit stop right there. I'm going to hit save. I'm going to go to this other thing. Chad, what's your plan here? Do you want to you drop me off or you want to hang around for a bit? What's your plan, Chad? Oh, wait. I'm sorry. Should I have talked? To, was that – is Jammer B there? I've got no plans. I've got no yeah, plans. Jammer B's running the board. Chad. Oh, okay. Right on. I'm sorry. That should have been a Jammer B question then. Oh, uh, yeah. No, no. I'm going home. I'm going to wait for people to go home. Chad, Chad probably will be with everything. We can keep you on for a bit. All right. Well, that's cool. Let me do uh, – there, there was a couple of videos that I thought were actually pretty funny earlier but i didn't get the chance to do um to do them i'm going to save as a wmv to be safe and then i'm going to save as again as a dot mov save and there's the encoding thing and now all right let me find some of these other ones this is this was almost the opening to the show, but I was too tickled by the uh, by the weatherman in that moment. Hey, I'm gonna um, all decks, all Justin. stations. Wait, what? I'm gonna turn off Justin's feed to you. Okay, that's fine. Because he walked away. No, that's all right. All right, here we go. All decks, all stations. This is the captain speaking. All decks, I must have your full attention. <clears throat> So that was here. I'll go ahead and post that link in the chat. That was one of our near misses. That was a really good one. <laughs> Somewhere, someone's dog is going ape crap. Um, we already did this one. We actually, this one we should do because it is bleeped in honor of uh, Fourth of July. It's an old one though. See, I don't understand why they did this slow down thing. That's so not the best part. It's this this part here. Get the wire in the <laughs> Jesus Christ! Lord have mercy! Get the wire in the <laughs> and go in now! Ah, the motherfucking bootleg fireworks! Oh, <laughs> <laughs> All right, so there's that. Um, <laughs> Audrey SJ, help this man. Okay. Oh, this is the greatest thing on earth. This is a Quop cosplayer. Here we go. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
<laughs> oh, I'm so in love with that. Oh, I, I, it just occurred to me that um, I, I here I'm actually going to play Quop. I'm going to play Quop for you right now because you haven't seen this, Kurt. Q W O P. Let's go search. Here's Quop. So here's the thing. You got uh, you uh, you got your thighs and your calves, and they're powered by Q W O and P. So you guys got it. You just gotta. So it's a rhythm deal. Wait, uh, nope. <laughs> okay, hold on, hold on. All right. Wait. Oh yeah. Ah, oh, <laughs> son of a bitch. Okay, here we go. No, uh, uh, damn it. Okay. Your point nine meters is looking pretty good right now. <laughs> damn it. <laughs> point minus four. <laughs> damn it. All right, here we go. <laughs> damn. All right. Hold on. Uh, <laughs> no. Okay, that's one meter, though. Damn it. Oh. All right, I want you to try this. Nope, 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 <laughs> no, nope, no. nope. Ah, so close to two meters. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> Dude, this is BS. <laughs> this is... Here's the problem is that Kurt is genuinely amazing. at. He won at, at Tumors. In the game of tumors, yes. Kurt won. Had the biggest tumor of the month. <laughs> yeah, seriously, Kurt Kurt found out that he had um, a tumor bigger than his liver on his liver. Like, the the tumor wasn't on his liver. The <laughs> liver was on his tumor. And then they cut out, like, eight and a half pounds. Like, they're sitting there talking about, like, oh, yeah, you may need to go on the list for a liver uh, transplant. And he's just like, yeah, but will I make my show in ten days? <laughs> That's all I really cared about. <laughs> and then they're like, "Are you high? Is, is that crazy?" And he's like, "Well, no, I'm not high. Even though I'm, I'm doing. What did you say? Uh, I did uh, two milligrams of morphine every 15 minutes for over 30 hits, and just felt nothing, nothing at all. Because you were... and I were live chatting the whole time. I'm like, dude, I feel nothing. Like I take a break and hit my button. <laughs> I set my alarm every 15 minutes. Beep. You're like, oh yeah, no, it's time for me to hit yeah. the button again. Nothing. <sighs> this is there's no way. Anyway, but uh, but then then this guy. So not only does he say, well, I make my show in two weeks. He he also is like, well, let me talk to the surgeon. And then he says to the surgeon, essentially, bro, you're sort of the best in your field. Why don't you prove it by doing such a good job that I can do my show in a week? <laughs> And then essentially, that's what the surgeon does, right? And, yeah. And what's really cool is, uh, like, you know, like after you have surgery, your surgeon never talks to you. Never. My surgeon follows me on Facebook and Twitter, and we text once in a while now, which is really cool. He texts me pictures of it. Like, he shows pictures of my tumor at cocktail parties and stuff. Are you serious? Yeah. Like, cause it was what, that, it, it was, was that the rare. size. It was the size of a volleyball. Is it's, that right? Yeah. 14 and a half centimeters by 17 centimeters. That's unreal. So it's like a rugby ball shape but about the same volume as a volleyball yeah my liver was hiding behind the tumor it was he ashamed I, yeah i guess it was trying to protect itself i suppose i don't know dang it uh, no <sighs> so so far if i get positive meters i'll, I'll probably on average beat you <laughs> yeah Hold on. Oh, look at this. Oh, look at this. He's, oh, 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 fall forward, fall yeah, forward. Oh, you have your yeah, best. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Oh, no! Oh, all right, here, you, you try this. Okay, all right. all right. It's just Q, W, O, and P. Those are the things. I'm going to run downstairs and get a beer. All right, I'm on your live mic now. Oh, I got a good mic don't, and a keyboard. Don't, don't I'm, I'm like an adult now. There you go. You're like a real boy. Ooh. If I come back, I'm, I'm dead serious. If I come back and you've defeated me, uh, you're going to sleep in a car. All right. Look at this. The first try, I'm going to beat him. No. Oh, come on. Come on. Go, baby. Go. This is the first time I've ever played this game. Brushwood, I toast you, man. My first time ever, I'm over four meters. I should just fall down just so I win. I refuse. Uh, 
Yeah. Come on, got it. 6.9. First time ever. There we go. Awesome. I'll play again. Uh, yeah, not so good that time. Uh, I lost my mojo, I guess. Come on. Get up and run. Get up and run. Get up and run. It's like the hardest game ever. It's four buttons. Come on. Ah, so he says slow down the taps. Okay. We'll try that. Dude, my first time ever, I got almost seven yards. <laughs> yeah. Totally, totally toasted you the first time. Uh, I'm going backwards now. Of course, crap. Are you? Yeah. Uh -huh. See, that's the problem, right? It's like you just get worse yeah. the more okay, you play. Okay, but can you, can you look at your your high score here or see? Yeah, no, no, your... no, you can see it. You can see it. Like, you you got to run up to it. You'll see it as. Oh, a I, I can't get that far again. <laughs> it was and I know you time? can't get that far. Okay, all right. I see what you're doing here. <laughs> oh, look, that was a brushwood see, run. I, oh, okay, all right. Uh. <laughs> I'm not exactly sure kind of what pattern I got into to start with. See, and I don't, there's something about that beginning. It's like crack. Quap is like crack. <laughs> like, why would you walk backwards just pawing your face? Come on. You can do it. Go. Run. Run like the wind. <laughs> I'm dancing. I can't run. I'm dancing. No! <laughs> <laughs> I wish you would have been here for the first one. I believe you. I totally believe you. Everyone's telling me you made it past six meters, which is phenomenal. <laughs> yeah, I, I should have just stopped in the first one. No, like I said. this is great. I was, I was like, I'll stop at the first one. Uh, get up and run. Hold on. Somebody, somebody's sending us a hilarious rage get quit. up and run. Run. Oh, this is great. You you realize, guys, that we've got the uh, the Olympics are happening, which means... We got to do the next version of the Winter Games, although it'll be the Summer Games. We ought to think of a word that sounds like summer but means winter. The some some it sounds like what now? What do you got to think of? Yeah, I don't know. What what word do you got to think of? It sounds like what? Uh oh, well because we had uh, during the Winter Games, the the Winter Olympics, we did an episode called the Winter Games, ah. totally unaffiliated with. <laughs> With the the uh, the Olympics because that would be the um, the warm solstice games. Yeah. What about the funner games? Because that sounds like summer. <laughs> I don't like that. Are you just gonna? Oh, see, there it is. There's your best. Can you make it? Can he river raid? Can you make it? No. Can he? Oh, oh, no, no! Don't fall backward! Don't fall backward! You're good. You're good. You're good. <laughs> This is the greatest game of all time. No! Oh, I can see the finish line. No! <laughs> I just started to get somewhere. Oh my god. Ah, uh, yeah, man. So there's that. I can't believe I can't believe you had like more than your liver removed. 10 yeah. days ago and now you're here you have a show tomorrow for 6,000 people yeah and you're busy playing quap on a live stream for hundreds of people to watch like thousands of people to watch live yeah it's not really high plan on spending my uh my my night tonight like two weeks ago i wasn't sure if i was going to uh live live or be now, a okay, now, now, now tell me tell me sincerely life. like after the prognosis that they were giving you was there like serious like holy crap bro i'm gonna die you know, I, I just kind of never plan on that. Like, there's just you're like, sorry, bro, that's not yeah, the plan. I'm like, that's not me. That's, <laughs> you know, I've got other things I've got to do. What? Keep keep talking about dying because you're winning yeah. a co-op. I've got I've got three kids and a wife, and I'm just not ready to. I've got too much too much magic, too much art in me, too many things I've got to do yet with my life. So, dying wasn't wasn't one of them. It's amazing. I just kind of I just kind of felt like I was going to be okay. Um, but I guess the worst minute for me was it took me five hours to initially see a doctor in the emergency room. Yeah. So once I see him, 
they do some tests and stuff. They say, well, we're going to send you back for a full CT scan. Now, at what point does the immensity of your situation hit you? Because well, that's, imagine... that's kind of what I'm getting to is the, the, the point where I knew it was really something. Yeah. Is um, I go back for the CT scan and I, I already know it's going to be like another hour before I see the doctor because I end up going to the emergency room for this. And now, mind you, I went in the emergency room with a stomach ache. <laughs> Okay, you're like I got a belly ache. They're like, oh, yeah, well, that's nobody else was because open. you're gonna die. Nobody else was open, so I'm like, well, I'll just go down there and we, so, so they send me for a full CT scan, and on the way back, I'm thinking, well, now I'm just gonna sit in this room for another hour and wait on the doctor because it took five hours to see him to start with, right? And so, ah! oh, twelve point nine. See, the moment you you talk to a doctor, yeah. you, you flop. So when they open, keep keep going. I, I like this. I like this. I want to start interviewing people while they play <laughs> quap, <laughs> and seeing if they can defeat their all time record. So when they open the door to my room, I can see the doctor's already there, and I'm thinking this is not good. The, the doctor never is waiting on you sure. to get into your emergency room. There's I now and the doctor looks like you, the, they the took doc, me. The doctor is you, all you see is like through the crack of the door. You see the doctor going. He he's standing there now. It took three hours to get called back, and then they left me in the hallway for two hours. Right. Like I twit posted a picture that said hallway D, and I said this has been my room for two hours. Holy I'm like in cow. the in literally in the hallway for two hours. So they I, they finally do the test, and I get back there, and they open up the room, and the doctor's standing there. And I thought, this is not good. Yeah, sure. And then when they pushed it, the door all the way open, my wife's in the other side, and she's crying. Oh, that's that's usually not a good sign. And I'm like, this when is, this is, is not a stomach ache. This is the, I no longer have just a stomach ache. She's crying with joy because this will be so easy to fix? Yeah. Well, uh, what they said was, um, Mr. Anderson, you, uh, well, we found a tumor on your liver. We found some spots on your intestines. Oh, and you have a kidney stone, which you, I don't know if you even know, I have a one full you get a centimeter rock. kidney you got a, stone you still got a inside crack rock in your yeah. crank. Yeah, it's, it's, you a, got a crank rock. 10, 10 millimeter kidney called. stone in my kidney. Yeah. Uh, so I hear you've got these things on your intestines. And you're like, ah, oh, so I got a bunch of crap, whatever. Well, no, because my grandmother died of colon cancer. Yeah. I had an uncle on one side of my family have colon cancer. By, by the way, do you, you, you want to tell everyone the other side of the story about your, your history with, with the missus? Uh, well, my wife has had breast cancer twice uh, Two times. before she won, age she 40. She won the cancer lottery twice, Twice people. before age 40. She took all of the um, the testing for what uh, they, they call bracket testing, mm -hmm. which is uh, to see if you have um, hereditary and negative. For all of that, sure. Negative, like by all, like she's got right. no genetic like randomly, randomly got it twice. Like never smoked a cigarette, you know, uh, a college athlete, healthy. And in fact, the first time we met in person, she was still undergoing chemotherapy, right? Yeah, she, she had yeah. her hat on and, and everything. Yeah, and, lost uh, her hair twice. Yeah, you know, man. the whole thing, a full blast of chemo and radiation, like the strongest stuff they can give you. Four types of chemo the last time. You guys, and what was amazing... And then our oldest son has one of the most rare forms of epilepsy that's that's ever, you know, yeah, been that, devised. Well, well, He's and, had and, it for 11 years, taking his ability to learn and communicate away from him. Yeah. Well, and, and I'll tell you what, though. What's amazing to me is how you guys um, just... It, it's amazing how it's it's you guys sort of shrug your shoulders and be like well i mean that's what we were dealt now we're gonna rock it you know right i mean it's it's amazing to me i think i think it's truly it is the the way you face that kind of harsh reality as a like well what are you gonna do sit around and cry or just you know yeah. kick it in the nuts get up and go to your next show yeah you know? <laughs> exactly like, so uh so yeah so the guy tells me you've got this stuff on your intestines and um, you have a kidney stone, and, and so I'm going, whoa, whoa, wait a minute now, what? Because I've had two uncles that had, you know, intestinal cancer and everything, and he goes, yeah, it's big. And I went, and you're, so part of you is just like, I'm sorry, uh, well, don't you I'm mean my wife thinking has about my intestines? Again? Yeah, sure. You know, and he says it's big. I said, how big? And he holds his hands up, and I'm like, that's like the size of a volleyball. And he goes, yeah, the mass in your liver is like the size of a volleyball. And I was like. My liver, I'm worried about my intestines. So now I'm thinking I've got cancer in my colon and my intestines, and that's no big deal compared to what's on my liver. Right. That's when it became real. And he goes, oh, and you got a kidney stone. Like, they're not even worried. <laughs> well, 
the, this oh, is supposed to be jobs. like the worst pain known to man. They won't even the way, allow your, your you to try. Your parting gift is that you also have a kidney stone. Right. They won't even allow you to try to pass a kidney stone of five millimeters. I've got one that's over 10, and they're going, oh, we're not even worried about that. You know, we, so you're like, we hope you live long enough. Yeah, to pass yeah. This you, you'd be stone. nice to experience the worst pain known to man. That's um, amazing. Okay, and and so uh, and by the way, uh, I, I think I've got the freaking texts that you sent to me. I kind of want you. Do you mind if I show the texts of how you just sort of dropped this science on me? Oh, no, that's nowhere. fine. Let me do. Uh, all right. So the last thing, I'm going to load earlier messages here. Hold on. Okay, so it's like we're talking about booking shows, right? right. And so and so you say, uh, you know, I'm working my tail off, not many shows, right? Yeah. And then the next thing you tweet is like, whoa, week's getting worse. They just told me that I got a lump the size of a volleyball on my freaking on, – on my uh, – week getting worse. It's not good. They found a mass the size of a volleyball on my liver and a few masses in my intestines. Plus, I have kidney stones. Tough day. Lots of bad news. And I respond yeah. by saying – a volleyball? A literal volleyball? <laughs> and you're like, yes, 16 yeah. plus centimeters. Well, when they show, when the doctor held his hands up, my wife's like, it's that big? And she's, he's like, yeah. And she goes, was it flat like a plate? And he said, no, it's like a volleyball. Yeah. Like, well, and then meanwhile, and then it's like you're rocking my world saying like, yeah, the doctor's never seen anything like this. Uh, cancer is a big possibility. And I'm like, holy crap. And you're like, it's at least at least a major su surgery. And they don't know about the masses in my intestines. They look different. Um, Turns out that was inflammation and uh, stuff caused from the, the big mass on my liver. So here's the part that totally blew my mind is um, – is I freak out and I'm just like, holy crap, what can I do? How are you holding up emotionally? And you say, like, it's nothing like, I'm okay, worried about my family, no income if it takes me down for a while, would lose the house and cars probably, like, emotionally I'm fine. Like, just the flat reality of like, I don't know, guess I'll lose the house and cars and stuff, you know, mainly worried about the, the kids. It's, it's amazing, man. Well, you know, you start thinking. Oh, yeah, no, it. hold on. This is my favorite part. It says, I didn't cause this just so I, uh, so I just move forward and do what I can to get through it. And I say, well, when you run low on emotional juice, always feel free to give me a call, dot, dot, dot. And then you respond by saying, I sure as hell wouldn't take your liver, though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. If they're doing liver transplants. Yours is not the one I want. I watch Scam School. You're drinking beer every episode. <laughs> Son of a bitch. And it was amazing talking to you like like that night, that night um, that before you had your surgery, like it was a very real possibility. They were talking about splitting you in autopsy style. Yeah, you they're, they're looking at if, if they got in there and there was more than what they could see on the on the scan, that they would cut me up by my sternum all the way down to my belly button and then 30 degrees across to my so, hip. Sure. Just just the one side. Yeah. OK. Yeah. Um, it, and, but to like like flap open your yeah, body yeah and i remember it, it's funny because i remember they they told me that if it gets to that they'll put an iv in my wrist am i should we look in the camera are we still live no, no okay. we're live All but right. nobody uh, they want to pretend that we're with that they don't okay they just flies on i the know wall, you're right? there okay yes, but right, i'm but talking are, to are, him yeah, over no, here talking, bro, be cool that so cool, um right? so they said they would put a, an iv in my wrist to do blood gases and stuff that they needed. And then there would be like an auxiliary shunt in my neck if things got really bad. So I remember in in surgery recovery, um, I can't open my eyes yet, but I know I'm starting to become conscious. And I remember reaching up and feeling my neck. Wait, wait now real quick, what are you thinking like while you go under? Because somebody puts a thing on your face and you think, Well, they actually gave, goes. Me, gave me injections through IV that put me out before that. Okay, but th there's a moment when you know they're triggering the go-go juice. Yeah. And and, and what, right. do you remember your last thought? Like, do you remember like, well, here we go. Or and My last thought is this thing is so big. I'm glad that we're, that we're going into surgery. I can't. I can't affect the outcome from here. Yeah. So I'm just glad that we're going to get this done and let me see where I'm at. Yeah. 
you know, sometimes the not knowing is the worst thing, and that's the deal I learned from my wife with right, breast don't, cancer. Don't, don't, don't ever look at them again. Okay. Look at them. I, they right. don't exist. I, I only mean. So uh, there I'm, is no chat room. I'm, I'm only used bro- to TV interviews. <laughs> where you got to look camera one, camera two. No, screw the camera. Thing <laughs> here. No, no, cut it. Rap, 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 rap. Shut up. Get commercial. Um, <laughs> he's looking at the cameras. He's looking at the cameras. Yeah. But... You got the guy in your ear. He's going, "Hey, Jim, get in tight on camera two. Make it turn to camera two. So we're going live back to the studio. Shut him up. <laughs> All right. So, um, yeah. So, you know, talking to my wife the first time she found the lump in her breast, she's, you know, afterwards we discussed it at great length, obviously, as we did throughout. Oh, sure. And she said the toughest part of the whole thing was when I didn't know if I had cancer or not. Yeah. Like she had it in her head from the start. She had cancer. Yeah. She's like, you know what? It's, it's in my yeah. family. I got, I got cancer, a lump on the breast. It's got to be. Sure. Let's get this over with. Right. It's not going to be fun, but, but so and so survived. You actually and... get the test back and stuff, and you don't actually know for sure. That was the toughest thing. Yeah. Well, I kind of always planned on living. I, I had to face the reality that maybe I wouldn't. I mean, because that's a distinct possibility. Did, did, when they're saying we've did, never seen anything like this, and did you like like do any arranging of your affairs? Make sure that you know, you suss up your your will and so on. Uh, you know, I, I try to keep that stuff in line. Okay, so, so you already covered I brought the regards. kids in, yeah. you know, and I, I didn't get all weirded out with them, but I just I told each one of them, I said, look, look you hey, know, I have, by the way, your I have dad done, has a football in his belly, and uh, P.S., he might not be alive. I just I right just now. told them all, I said, hey, look, you know, I, I've always tried to do my best to teach you what's right and, and, and do what you're supposed to do, and sure. you guys have been good kids. I'm going into surgery. I know that everything's going to be fine, but there's always a chance. And so I just want to tell you guys that I love you. You know, I'll be fine. But, you know, if something does happen, nothing changes as far as what I expect from you. Right. And, right. you know, but but be, don't don't worry about me if, you know, I mean, obviously, if, if I didn't come out of surgery, then they would be sorrowful and so forth. But there's no reason to worry about me until that happens. Right. So I I, I, I want to see them before I went. I want to tell them that a, I love them, but not tell them, hey, you know, just in case they don't make it, you that's, know. That, see, like, this is the opposite, because I'd be all like, like, I mean, if I got the same news, like, yeah. the night before, I'd be like, listen, uh, whatever happens, you start building a statue, and you build it as tall as you can. Yeah. And you make it look exactly like this picture specifically, not yeah. this one where I'm eating yeah, yeah. pork chops, but like this one, and make it a, and make a, like a robotic voice being like I don't know something majestic, like see if you can get John Williams to make a you know da 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 he's freaking amazing is Brian. Like I would be like that would be my legacy that I'd be working on immediately. <laughs> yeah. It, so, you know, I just always felt like it's going to be okay, but. Again, it's, I didn't do anything to cause the, the thing. And here's what, here's what they said was so odd about what I have is I should have been in extreme pain for like months or possibly yeah, years. But you're a freak when it comes to pain. This guy, this guy oh, so, by the way, BT Dubs, he won a hands on a hard body uh, type contest. Uh, I mean, for yeah. a boat. For yeah. a boat. Like, and the way he won it was like, and, and it was like you could not shift your hand. Yeah, you even couldn't move your hand at all. Uh, you couldn't lean. You had to keep your weight distributed between your feet. Sure. Your hand could never move. Right. Uh, you had five minute break once per hour. The the chick he defeated was part of like a, a cartel of boat winners that that extended back well, for however long. You know, they had never won, but she but was second. She had to a me. whole support team. Yeah. or whatever. They spent tens of thousands of dollars preparing and the her. moment the moment that won it was when was when uh, kurt's there with his hands on there and and it's down to just him and one other chick started friday we're talking tuesday now yes yeah, 72 okay. hours right uh, it's it 91 a... hours and 38 minutes Jesus louise okay so anyway so you're there and so and and one of your buddies comes up and you're like hey man uh we gonna get wings or what and then you kind of look at your watch you're like um i don't know i, I expect to have won it by uh Thursday. tuesday or by, or by Thursday, Thursday. By Thursday. Yeah. yeah, and you just shrug like like it's no big deal. Like I don't know, right. I'm probably staying here for a day or two. Because the same girl was second the year before, and yes. she lost on Wednesday. Yeah. So my buddy's like, "Hey, I'm going to work. I didn't think you'd still be here. Yes. You know, I've been listening since Friday. It's yes. Tuesday. He says, "Can I come back by and bring you a burger, wings, or something?" I said, "Sure." And uh, he said, well, "You're going to be here after work?" I said, "Oh yeah, we'll be here." He goes, "What makes you say that?" And I said, "Well, I feel great." <laughs> and the girl that I'm up against went till Wednesday last year, and, and I've seen her team. I know she's prepared. 
So she's probably going to go till Thursday. I figure I'll win Thursday. <laughs> yes. And then, and then the, and, and the moment you say this, the chick, like three feet away from you, just starts bawling, just, just starts losing it. And her mother, <laughs> now she's college age. She's like 22. Yes. Her oh. mother goes to the judge and says that I'm trying to, that I'm trying to goad her into losing. And the judge comes over and asks what's happened. I said, <gasps> look, no, I was talking to somebody else. And I was just being candid because I honestly, like, I didn't come out of here to lose. Yeah, okay? sure. I mean, she didn't come out here to lose. Yeah, none of and us did. And I didn't did. say, you know, I just said, I believe I, say, I can hold my hand here until like, Thursday. You're, you're like, let me let me clear the record. What I did not say was, oh, I plan to have her family killed by Wednesday. Right, it's right. Like, <laughs> I didn't say anything to her or about, I just said, I plan on being here. I figure it'll take till Thursday to win it. Yeah, sure. Nothing against her, whatever. So, anyways, they, they even had looked at, filing a court case and the whole thing um, but they didn't it it, it it was just a stressful time she was second the year before her, her mother was like um, what kind of great she was, person she are was you? eighth the year before that the year before that her mother was second and the year before that her mother was 10 you're sitting you're sitting here defending her this we is became amazing. friends we actually almost went on the amazing race together what? um you know, it's just, it's a stressful time. She was sleep deprived. For some reason, I, I never got sleep deprived. As a matter of fact, the weirdest thing probably about the whole deal was when it was over, I went and took the drug test. You have to take the drug test if you win. To make sure you aren't second all or third. hopped up. Okay. Right. And then I wasn't tired. So I went and did a couple interviews and then I went and played a softball tournament that night. Are you kidding me? So I was actually up from Friday morning at 7 a.m. till about 11.30 Tuesday night. No, but, but I And then I was back up Wednesday can, at 7 o'clock. Can, can't you take, like, little naps along the well, way? Well, you or? get a five-minute break once an hour. Okay. And you get a 15-minute break at 12 o'clock noon and midnight. You're a freak, man. So I just decided... Morphine you know, did not affect you. Morphine didn't affect me. You are it? robot. You are cyborg. I, I'm scared about the kidney stone. <laughs> because they give you morphine to stop the pain, and I know it doesn't affect me. Well, you're like, uh, listen, I brought my own. It's called heroin. Well, and, uh, no, that's the, that's the crazy thing. thing. When they sent me home from the hospital, the pain medicine they gave me is uh, an oxycodone. It, it, yeah, it's, a, it's which an is opioid. The same sure, opioid sure. as the same base as heroin. Yeah, sure. And so I took a couple of these and nothing. So I called the doctor's office the next day, and they're like, yeah, triple the dose. And, and you're like, okay. So I, so I tripled the dose, nothing. So I run through a week's prescription in like three days. So I, I call the doctor and I say, look, this didn't do anything. And I'm still uncomfortable. I'm, I'm having a hard time sleeping at night. Yeah. Can you give me something else? They're like, like, this is about as strong as stuff as we can give You're you. Like, we can give you a back rub. Well, they didn't, they didn't call me back. So I called the pharmacy the next day. I said, look, can you call this in? They said, no, no, what they gave you is so strong, you can't have it called in. You have to have a written script. Yeah, sure. So... I called the, the office back the next day and said, can you prescribe me something else? Because this isn't working. And right. they said, well, we don't really have anything stronger we can prescribe you. But we'll prescribe you the biggest pill this oxycodone they make. And then you take, like, two they of these you, every... They give you a, one of these. They're like, here, the put, big this, horse put this in your mouth. So it's like 755s or something like that. And I'm supposed to take, like, two every four hours. And so I... Popped two of those. Four hours later, popped two more. Didn't do anything. I just that's the only four I took because it, it literally did nothing for me. See, you're a you're a freak of nature, man. This so, is amazing. It, it's completely nuts. But the the whole thing that was so different. I, you know, there's a lot of people who had you know volleyball sized tumors, but they said the liver is one of the most sensitive areas to get a tumor. Yeah, like a big tumor in your liver is the size of the end of your thumb. Like yeah, the tip of your thumb. And now I've got a tumor bigger than my liver on my some you know on my liver right and i'm not in pain and they're like how and i said well i like play volleyball every week i play basketball every week you know and i'm out there playing with guys like college age yeah sure you know, half my age yeah and i'm, I'm holding my own you know and they're like you had to have been in some kind of pain i'm like i'm not in any pain and so that was what was so bizarre is there is no tumor that they've ever found in their checking and stuff that's benign that's that big that's attached like the whole face to your liver and yet it's the size of a volleyball and no pain it that is amazing dude that is incredible what sent me to the doctor was uh, it had got so big that it, it was folded blocking. my intestines yeah you couldn't like you a couldn't hose take like it you pinch it off yeah couldn't go yeah as it turns out it was pushing my my stomach into itself um, yeah. I, I turned found out i hadn't been using my right lung 
fully. Yeah. Oh, for that was the other years. thing. Like, 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 out of everything, like, I'm sitting here. You and I. Okay. So it's like I'm releasing the Scam School book. I, I do this talk at the DJ conference, and like, um, I find myself in this evening with nothing to do, and I'm there in a hotel room, and you and I start direct messaging each other, right. and it's like I am getting all deep and heavy in this, thinking like, son of a bitch, like Kurt is going to go in, they're talking about a, a, you know, a transplant, they're talking about this being it, and like, I'm like, this, yeah. I'm going to, I'm going to sit and uh, have this conversation knowing that, that Kurt may be dead, and, and this will be, I'm the guy who spent Kurt's last night on earth, so it's like, I'm going to make it work, and so I, I, I sent you funny video clips, yeah. and the two of yeah. us started swapping stories. And, yeah. and we talked about um, till, till you got tired. Well, well okay. <laughs> that's look, there's a limit to my compassion. Yeah, it's uh, I am a little bit tired. Uh, but we, we talked about Firefly, and oh, I'm yeah. like, I'm like, here are the credentials to my. I've watched the my entire Netflix, entire Firefly since yeah. then. Yeah, and, uh, and and but but meanwhile, as I'm like, what a peculiar thing. This could be Kurt's last night on Earth, and and I am honored and privileged to be participating in it you know no and plus every, it should be noted that every 15 minutes you you are dosing yourself <laughs> in with the morphine, morphine bun, right um, for, for nothing and as i go to bed i'm just like all right well hey man it's it's late and i, I guess we should call a night and you're like whatever pussy and then, <laughs> not, not not exactly i mean you didn't use those words <laughs> yeah. but that was the attitude uh and it's so all like well why? Hope you live. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then I go to bed. <laughs> How do you end that conversation? I know, right? right? And then and then I wake up in the morning, and it's just and you're just like, oh yeah, no, everything's out. And uh, plus, uh, there's like virtually, you know, I got like three minor dots on my yeah. body where they did the endoscopic surgery. And the next day, it was, uh, it was, it was amazing, man. It was. It, I am so thrilled that it worked out so well. Oh, yeah. And as strange as that evening was, I'm so thankful for it because, um, I don't know, there was something. It was that, great for me, too, It, it was one of those magic evenings where yeah. it's like there will never be, with with our friendship, a night like this again. Right. You know what hopefully. I mean? Hopefully. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> hopefully. Hopefully. Unless yeah. it's yeah. like, like <laughs> guess what, bro? My yeah. liver, yeah. It's, it's my yeah. turn. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, it was great for me because – like, my wife was trying not to show me that she was completely, like, wigged out. Like, she would she'd say, well, I need to go down to the, you know, get a Coke or something and go cry in the hallway for 30 minutes. You know, I didn't know this till afterwards. Right. Um, but I was kind of trying to pretty much be myself. You know, sure. like, I, like I said, I didn't cause it. I can't do the surgery. So all I can do is just be me and see how it happens, see how it turns out and do what I can. So, you know, you and I had that, let's just be us time you know we, we goofed around funny videos joking back and forth but but talking serious too at the same time um you know and that that allowed me to just kind of be an outlet and be myself so that was really it was good for me too um you know and then i also felt like it ought to be you know in print somewhere that if I was taking morphine every 15 minutes and did like really trip out. Yeah, sure. And I would be able to go back later and laugh with somebody and go, look, you can't believe what you said. Yeah. Mm -hmm. By the way, uh, I, we should talk a little, can, can we talk a little bit about, uh, the, the experience with the, uh, how you, with the doctor? Yeah. About, yeah. About that, the end of That was like one of my, one of like, my, I, 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 I am this close to trying to trick you into pulling up your shirt and showing how little you have on your it's amazing it is amazing he's got like a dot a dot so so here's so here. here how here's how it worked to start with the first hospital i was in told me that it was going to be like this you know this big cut like an 8 inch cut across here cuz that's like the smallest point of the thing sure so sure i would be cut like i would be split like this would be the smallest. They also talked about doing the full cut down here and right, across. The giant flat. If anything went wrong, giant flat. Right. Um, and I was like, mm, you know what? There's a better hospital to go to. UAB is an excellent hospital. Let's let's go there. The the surgeon came in before I could express my desire to go to UAB. The the, the one of the best surgeons in my town in Tuscaloosa came in and said, "Look, we've never seen anything like this before. We think you should go to UAB." We've called them. They've never seen anything like this before, but they've got a guy that does liver transplants all the time. He's the only guy we know, like in the, the state or hundreds of miles area, yeah, that would be qualified to handle anything that could go wrong here. So I'm like, that's, sure, a, that's sure. a great idea. Yeah. 
So they, they, they booked me over there. Now, I know it's a big deal when I get there and the doctors are in my room there. <laughs> they're okay. all eagerly yeah, they're all, anticipating. They're all excited. They're all amped up. And you don't want to be the guy like, that the hey, it's volleyball. Volleyball's yeah. here. What's up, bro? Volleyball. Yeah. What's up, Wilson? Yeah. Like, yeah. You don't want to be the guy that four or five surgeons are excited to see in the same day. And <laughs> yes. they got their coats on. Yeah. That's that's me. And they were like, <laughs> they're like <laughs> I'm Dr. Brosif right there. Yeah. Go. What's up? So, uh so they're telling me, look, you know, hopefully if everything goes perfect, we can do this uh, endoscopically. Right. And if that's the case, we're going to do two holes for the cameras and the, the wands and things. Sure. And then we'll have probably a three and a half. Basically snake something up there. Yeah. And, take a look. and then it'll be like a three and a half to five inch cut. Okay. And so I start thinking about that's a pretty big cut. Yes. You know, Ian, that's, gonna, that's small compared to what's inside me. Oh, sure, cool sure. With that. I mean, get it out. Okay. Well, Whatever and, keep you do, mind, get like, it out. and also, this was the analogy you gave because you said, uh, you said, uh, the way this tumor is, is a giant uh, eight and a half pound beast on your liver, uh, but it's it's mostly filled with fluid inside. And the way you described it was, imagine that over time, a jelly donut had crusted itself onto a desk. And the way to remove it was first you stuck something in to suck out all the jelly and deflate everything. Right. And then you went back and you sort of crusted off everything you could and sucked that right. out. Right? And it had a lot of walls and divisions and stuff in it. So. Sure, sure. So, yeah, that's, Multiple so that's chambers in there. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But they're looking at, you know, even if they take all the jelly stuff out, three and a half inch to five inch. Sure, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You got a giant gash. So as I'm thinking, that's a lot better than, you know, full cut yeah, open. Sure. But then I start thinking, I've got a show <laughs> in less than two <laughs> this weeks. Is, this is the amazing. This, this is, is how. What, this, this is, is how what I makes think. this man a master of quap is that he thinks three to five inches still too much bro too, too I want, big, I want, I want to know because i gotta get out of a, a box and handcuffs I, I, I gotta work my... and stuff <laughs> I was like, yeah um, I, i'm not escaping from a straight jacket with three to five inches right because yeah, i fix this could rip you know <laughs> so i start thinking about is there anything i can say right and so i, I realized that because of my wife having cancer my son having epilepsy i know a lot of surgeons and surgeons are great. I mean, by and large, great people. Sure. But oftentimes have this um, prideful disposition. Well, and also okay? they're, they're, busy they're, they're busy people. They're busy, busy people. Very busy people. But they, they save people's lives every day. Part of, and that's part of how they function as human right. beings is at some point you have to stop viewing them as human beings. And you need to look at them as the next batch of meat that you need to cut very carefully. But they have to reward their their pride by saying, I, I save people's lives every day. Sure, sure, sure. Well, I also know that the hospital I'm at, I already know that, that this is an unusual case. Sure. And they got the top guy coming in to do it. Yeah, absolutely. So this UAB is also a hospital where a lot of like really big up and coming surgeons come to study. Right. So I realized that they they called ahead. They talked to several surgeons. So there's several people watching. Right. And I've got like the best guy here going to do the surgery. So I, I kind of take a page from some mentalism stuff that I've been studying and some hypnosis stuff that I've been studying. You, and I, you and I use, use some carefully crafted words. I, I try to come up with a couple key phrases that I could repeat throughout my conversation. Right. Um, that would kind of give a directive. I'm going to change this over here, by the way. Go ahead. Keep talking. Okay. So, you know, without without delving into it too much so that people try to do weird stuff to their friends and family. Oh, whatever, no. Hold you know. it. Yeah, just tell them. Nobody um, cares. But. You know, I basically uh, appealed to his pride, let him know say, that everybody say was going to be. Say what you said, because that's that's the significant thing. Is well, that is is that you you? Uh, I emphasize the words. You will keep the scars as small as possible, and I emphasize you will. It, it, but, you but it wasn't, will it wasn't like a voodoo mind thing. It was it no, was like, but it was you, more. You infamous. said you 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 were essentially like, look, I understand you're at the top of the field, right. and I understand that you want to protect your reputation. Well, and I, because I told of that, him, I told I didn't I didn't say that because I don't want him to get defensive. Okay, all right. All right what right. I said was, you know, I got transferred here. I could have been transferred to any hospital, you know, in a pretty wide area, but I'm glad to be here. Because right. I know that you had the ability. You appealed to his pride. Right. You had the ability right. to do the best surgery for me. Right. I have full confidence in you. I expressed several times my confidence in you. I have full confidence that you will do your best to keep the scars as small as possible. So I, I give more emphasis to you will and small every time I talked about him and the scars. And I said, I know that you can't approve me doing a show in 10 days. Right. 
I know but, you can't officially. But you know, I also mm. know that, um, you know, the other doctors here will be seeing your work. The other um, people involved in this case will take a look at this when it's over to see what it was. And I know that gives you an opportunity to do your best work. And, and you that's also, why I, I, I'm I assuming you, also you did a trick for him before this. I did not. I what? Did, I did not. He didn't ask for a, a trick. It was just kind of all business. I did one later for him. Though. All right. All right. So, you know, I just kept telling him that I, I knew that he would do the best job. I knew that he would keep the uh, incisions as small as possible to give me my best chance to recover. And as an entertainer, you know, you never know when this may came up, you know, come up in the future on TV or, you know, whatever as they do my travels. Oh, so you dropped the implication so that I you could So I dropped the implication this could actually be, you know, this could a be a success story. story. Sure, sure, sure. And, you know, that, with, this with, is all, great, though, because, with all of because his colleagues being a part of this and them, them directing me to him being the head of this department, I knew – he was the guy. I know you're the guy. I have full confidence in you, and I don't have a doubt that you will do your best to keep the scars small. See, this is great because you you placed the focus on a positive. All where positive. you said, I have no doubt no that you will make this thing happen. Right. And and then and that, as a result, you will get this well-deserved reward. Right. I, I appealed to the, the natural inborn sense of pride that most surgeons have. Right. I appealed to the situation, which he knew was present. I, I knew there was a lot of doctors going to look at this when it was over. Sure, sure. And also implied that, you know, it would be vastly greater than that, and his name would always be attached. Now, what's going to be something, he'll probably end up hearing this or seeing this because he follows me on Facebook and Twitter and stuff. No, like no, 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 no. So, Every, everybody, nobody tell yeah. her Shh. doctor yeah. about this. Um, but, in you know, he, he may have done this type of work anyways because he was a really truly a great Look, and no, nobody doubts that these people do their best in the situation right. or whatever but knowing certain things affects your game you know right. it's like right. if you know that it's like let's say if i'm playing putt putt with my family i have a certain level of expectation about like i don't know i'll do right. my best question mark on trying to hit it but if you've hole. got one if hole that says, you like, played somebody showed you hey you always play this off the left wall right and it gives you a better angle when you come in off the roll to get a hole in one sure that's sure. the hole you know hey i know this better than anybody else absolutely well and especially if somebody would right. be like hey you're not playing for dollars you're not playing for credit you're playing for my personal life and i am somebody who deserves to have your full attention, that will fundamentally change right. my things, right? So you you managed to talk your way into not being a a another piece of meat to be right. cut, but but instead to be a, a an important person who deserved his best efforts. Yeah, yeah. Okay, seriously, can can we see your? You want to see? Okay. I, 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 there, well, there's just, just got, flash them. They're yeah. they're like three dots. This okay. is the amazing part. All right, so we go to the camera here. I'll, I'll, this I'll, is just, 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 yeah, there now, you go. Just, granted, uh, I'm supposed to have. This, in, he's in supposed to be split in the hospital uh, from here like this, or at minimum, um, like. They, they're telling, the they're telling him long. like, <laughs> right. flap open, grab stuff. The best case scenario I heard would be two holes here for the scopes. And then like a three and a half inch scar here, which would be like from here to here. Right. What I ended up with. Look at that. He's got dots on them. These two dots here. And then the incision, they actually removed. Is that amazing? Piece by piece out of my belly button. He's got dots. These are from a double hernia surgery last year. This, these are old news. Don't it, look at those this dots. This is the drain tube, which that's, you know, just. Is that amazing? They're freaking out right in the there. chat room. They're, They're just right there. That's it. That is amazing. That is amazing to Absolutely. me. Absolutely. So they he said what we decided once we got in there and we drained all the fluid was sure. that I could actually cut it apart piece by piece and remove it through your belly button, which they had used for the double hernia surgery. So he didn't even really make a new incision. He just uses your he used stuff. he just used the he reopened the one from the hernia and then pulled everything out piece by piece. That is amazing. People are saying it's the best trick ever uh, yeah. in, in the chat room. That is amazing. Well, I man. thought later I should have probably went ahead and done the flap and then just let him put Velcro it so I could hide stuff there in the show. <laughs> yeah. You know, you like, use make, it as a big thing it, disappear. Just like, yeah. hey, where your mashed where'd potatoes your wallet go? No, I have no like, clue. <laughs> and no clue. Uh, Strip search, man. All right, look, we, uh, we got to wrap things up here. Uh, thank you, everyone, to uh, – thank you to everyone who hung out this late. I hope you guys en enjoyed this rather – unconventional NSFW show. <laughs> yeah. Uh, 
it was a blast. It was. I, I. I would like to think this is one of the most fascinating episodes we've done. I don't know. Thank you, thank you, thank you a million times over to T2T2 being our live quiz show operator. That was amazing. It was amazing. Thank you very much, of course, to uh, Jammer B. Thank you very much to Chad. Had a great time. A bonus-sized episode of NSFW. <laughs> We're going to put that Trick and Scam School book three. There you go. Yo, you know what? Actually, we should. We should tell this story. Do, do this story and talk about the sure. positive, and they have, positive they have photos stuff. of your, your dots on you. We can do that. Because essentially, you're using Scam School yeah. techniques in order to freaking save your life and have, you know, dots instead of slashes. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. Uh, all right. Well, look, uh, uh, Jammer B, are we good to go, man? Jammer B left. Is yeah, Chad? forget yeah, that guy. Go. What did he ever do for us? Uh, yeah, right. <laughs> uh, Chad, thank you very much for helping us out and running the board and everything. Not a problem. All right, man. I will check you later on, guys. I hope you enjoyed tonight's episode. Thanks, everybody. Uh, thanks right. for having me on the show. People are saying, please definitely invite you back. So, we'll, oh, absolutely, we'll, we'll make that happen. I got a computer at the house. We can uh, yeah, we'll, can roll with we'll it. Skype in on some. We'll, we'll have a magic themed episode at some point. Cool. All right. Bye, guys. We love you. Burr, 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 burr. Bye. <laughs> okay. The spiky hair duo. <laughs> awesome. Cool. We're still on, on Justin, which I'm going to shut off now. You can live in a fire, it seems. <laughs> live in a fire. Everyone always said that that's our sign-off is die in a fire. Oh, yeah. But they're like, no, you can live in a fire. Okay. All right. Bye, guys.